Most IVF programs in 2021 are performing frozen embryo transfers rather than using fresh embryos. Frozen embryo transfers require that the uterus be prepared first in order to allow embryo implantation. The method used to prepare the uterine lining involves the patient taking estrogen to make the uterine lining thicker, followed by progesterone to transform the lining so it is receptive to an embryo. There has been a lot of research which indicates that the number of days that progesterone is given is important for optimizing IVF success. What about the number of days of estrogen? Does that matter? Let's take a look. This is the protocol for a typical frozen embryo transfer treatment. A woman calls with her period. A few days later, we perform a baseline blood test and ultrasound. We are looking to make sure that the patient's estrogen and progesterone levels are low and that the uterine lining looks normal. If everything looks good, the patient is started on estrogen. At IVF1, we typically start with oral estrogen, but vaginal estrogen, estrogen patches, or injections can also be used. Several days later, the patient returns for blood testing and ultrasound. We would like to see that the estrogen levels in the blood have started to go up and that the progesterone levels have stayed low. We would also like to see that the uterine lining has gotten thicker. At a certain point, when the doctor has determined that the lining is ready, the patient will be started on progesterone and the embryo transfer is scheduled. For top IVF programs like ours that transfer blastocysts, the embryo transfer is typically scheduled on the sixth day of progesterone. The number of days needed for the estrogen part of the preparation is going to vary based on how quickly the patient's uterine lining gets thicker and the availability of the patient, the doctor, and the IVF lab. The length of time for progesterone is usually going to be the same six days. Is there an optimal number of days to have a patient take estrogen before beginning the progesterone? In other words, is it better to have less days of estrogen or more? To answer this question, we looked at the data from my patients at the Naperville Fertility Center. To maximize our pregnancy rates, all patients at our center get frozen embryo transfer. To minimize the risk of multiple pregnancy, everybody has transfer of a single embryo. So far in 2021, I have performed over 300 embryo transfers. To prevent skewing the results, I analyzed only the first embryo transfer for each patient during that time. Ultimately, we looked at 253 embryo transfer cycles. We divided the patients so that we would get roughly equal numbers of patients in each group. There were four groups. Group one were patients who had nine or 10 days of estrogen before starting progesterone. Group two had 11 days, group three had 12 days, and group four had 13 or more days. Question number one, did the number of days of estrogen impact the chance that the embryo would implant? There wasn't any significant difference in the percentage of patients who had a positive pregnancy test eight days after the transfer. This was true when we looked at all of the patients and those patients who had transferred embryos that were tested for chromosome abnormalities, which is called PGT. Question number two, was there a difference in the risk for miscarriage? We monitored pregnant patients initially with blood tests and eventually with ultrasounds. We followed them until we were able to see a fetus with a flickering heart motion on ultrasound at least twice. This is called an ongoing pregnancy. Since most miscarriages occur before this, it is the point we usually send our patients back to their obstetrician. The miscarriage rate did not show any particular trend based on the number of days estrogen was given. Our Infertility TV bottom line is this. There does not appear to be any impact of the length of time that estrogen is given in frozen embryo transfer cycles. Frozen embryo transfers can be scheduled once the lining is found to meet the criteria of the IVF program and to accommodate the needs of the patient and program. Infertility TV is your most trusted source for accurate information on infertility and miscarriage. If you are not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button right now. A new episode is released every week. Don't miss any episodes. You can also check us out on our website, ivf1.com, where you can become a patient.